Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is a beautiful day outside, so I appreciate you taking the time to come to the Greenwood Drive Reconstruction Community Meeting. We are joined via webinar this morning, so thanks for the folks who are joining us via webinar and for those who will go back and watch this video after it is posted. We have 103 people signed up on the webinar this morning. It's a great number for us. Lots of folks joining from wherever they may have been able to come in from. And then we have a full group in the audience as well this morning. So Russell Frederick and myself will be spearheading this meeting and we'll move into the agenda. I'll cover our welcome and filming process reminder, which I've just done. As a courtesy, if you wouldn't mind, if you're in the audience, please silence your cell phones or turn them off during the duration of the meeting so we don't interrupt the presenters. We would certainly appreciate that. Russell will cover a number of different items. He will review the project area of this scope of work, um, go through the project investigation planning, uh, current conditions on Greenwood Drive. He will cover the project goals for the Greenwood Drive reconstruction project, the projected construction schedule, the vehicular traffic plan, the leisure trail traffic plan, and then I will come back up to speak on our project communication plan. We will take a short five-minute break following the presentation, and then we will resume the meeting with a question and answer session. So without further ado, I'll bring Russell up. And again, we are joined via webinar, so we will be speaking directly into the microphones. If for some reason you cannot hear us in the back, please let us know. Our audio must be picked up to be heard by those folks on the phone line and joining via webinar. So, Russell, there you go. Thank you, Amanda, and I really appreciate the turnout today. We, we thank you for being here and uh, also joining us on, on the web. Uh, we have a lot to cover, but uh, I have one quick story before we talk about Greenwood Drive. I have a Clark Griswold story that I experienced at my house about three weeks ago. I was sitting down to dinner, and all of a sudden I hear on the door, I'm like, who the heck is this? You know, we're, you know it's 6 o'clock, you know, we live on a dirt road, so who can come visiting? So, anyway, I go to the door, I see this guy at the door, I'm like, I never saw you before. He said, do you mind if we come into your house and look around? I'm like, really? The next thing, he's like, can I go look in the car? I'm like, can you please explain yourself? I have no idea why you're doing this. Anyway, he was the owner of my home four owners ago, and they happened to be coming through South Carolina. They wanted to go see what the house looked like. I'm like, dude, really? Oh. Anyway, they, they ended up being at the house with their three, three kids, showing around the house for an hour and a half. I'm like, my I think my dinner is now cold. Anyway, uh, as you remember from Clark Griswold movie when Cousin Eddie showed up, that's what it felt like. So, anyway, my Clark Griswold story. Well, uh, let me thank you for coming out today. Um, we have a great turnout. I wanted to talk about Greenwood Drive. We've spoken about this quite a bit over the last year. There's a lot of moving pieces to this project. Uh, we've been working closely with uh, our engineer, our civil engineer on the project, Cranston Engineering, and Andy uh, Bajowski is joining us today uh, from Cranston and can uh, also answer questions about the engineering of the road, why we, uh, why they have made certain decisions, uh, certain aspects of the project, like removing curbing and things of that nature. Uh, again, this is a very fluid project with a lot of complicated moving pieces, and I know I've heard a lot of comments about other construction outside sea pines, um, and obviously we want to make sure this project uh, moves, moves along as seamlessly as possible. Um, so without further ado, I'll go into some of those details. So Greenwood Drive, the project is from Club Course Drive, and the intersection of Club Course will be open into the Club Course community. So the project starts right after that, and I'll have a map to show you of that area. Then it continues for a mile and a half all the way down to the intersection of Plantation Drive and Greenwood. So again, so again the uh, project, project area, as I mentioned, starts right here at Club Course intersection and Greenwood Drive. Continues all the way down here to the plantation. So obviously, there's going to be a lot of questions 
about an access, especially if you live in Carolina Place, Lake Forest, uh, and so forth. So when we go further into the plan, I can explain some of those details. So some of these slides are repetitive from the community coffee. I apologize for that, but I just wanted to go through these um, one more time. Some of the things that we've already done, the CSA has done over the years, uh, before we even got to this point, and these are all important pieces of this project, because without doing this, we wouldn't be able to move forward with the construction. One of the most important aspects was a geotechnical investigation that was performed back in 2015, in which um, uh, equipment was brought in to bore into the roadway to see where the underbed of the road was compromised of. That, that provided additional information uh, for our engineers to come up with an engineering design. The topo topographic survey, the property boundary survey is another important part of this project that was done well in advance. And again, that allows our engineers to come up with a comprehensive plan and, des and design. Cursory engineering was performed about a year ago and where we developed the opinion of cost. We worked with the contractors to do that as well. And then that ultimately led us to developing our budget for the project. As I mentioned, mentioned before, it's about $2 million roughly. And then finally, the hydrology study that was performed in 2016 uh, throughout Sea Pines also provided us with a lot of information along Greenwood Drive uh, regarding the drainage issues that we have. So some of the current issues that we have along Greenwood Drive is a roadway that's in substantial disrepair. And in some of these orders, you can see the reflective cracking. The curbing is in great disrepair, broken in many areas. And you can see here that there's these flumes that were incorporated into the curbing along the road. So these flumes are channeling water off the roadway and therefore causing substantial erosion, pushing a lot of that sediment into our stormwater and drainage uh, system. Uh, and again, you can see here in these photos, um, sometimes as you're coming in Greenwood, you might not notice this, um, but these, these um, areas that are becoming eroded are much more substantial than they were uh, a few years ago. Again, additional photos. You can see how deep this is. This is about two feet deep. Here's an irrigation line that's now exposed. And then through the years, there was makeshift, makeshift fixes that were done by the uh, in-house staff. Like this pipe was put in here where there's a flume that was connected to the drainage ditch as a temporary fix. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of this on Greenwood Drive. And again, here's another example of an area where we have substantial runoff. And these are all safety issues. If you have a vehicle, you're certainly not going to be able to, if you're driving off the roadway, you certainly can't get over this curb. It's about two feet uh, deep from the, the road to the curb. Um, so, so again, in these areas uh, are, are all areas that our engineer has been looking at closely and solving uh, some of these issues through his uh, through their engineering design. So, so drainage issues. Our crews, our new stormwater crew, that started this started this past year, has been out working throughout Sea Pines, and we've spent a lot of time on Greenwood Drive. Uh, this happens to be a pipe um, adjacent to Lot Two uh, on Greenwood Drive, which was completely clogged with mud. Uh, so it took us uh, about two weeks to unclog all this, and we have some, this is a vacuum extractor that we purchased this last year um, that you've probably seen around the community, and we have two staff dedicated to this. Um, we've been clearing all these pipes um, in preparation for some of the work that's coming up here on, on Greenwood. And again, most of these pipes were 80% or 100% full of sediment. Okay, so some... Some of our project goals, to rebuild the 1.5 miles of Greenwood Drive. And when I say reconstruction, um, it's significant. It's not just putting asphalt down, um, it's drainage, 
it's removing curbing, it's, all, it's a lot of things, and I'll go through some more in the next slides. One of the most important things that we're looking to do is to stabilize the roadbed. In many areas, you saw that reflective cracking. That's, there's quite a bit of it on Greenwood Drive. Removing the curbing, holding more. So I already had a question in the audience, and we, we can address that when we go to the Q&A. Why remove the curb? The curbing is holding water on the road, further deteriorating the asphalt. Improve traffic flow and safety. Our engineers have been uh, very busy looking at this, um, looking at the turning lanes uh, throughout Greenwood Drive, starting at Plantation all the way up to Club Course. We need to improve and lengthen some of those turning lanes uh, in many areas to increase stacking of vehicles. So again, the goal there is to improve the safety of the road. Along with that, the roadway will be widened by about two feet. Um, and the last one is improve and increase drainage efficiency. As I mentioned, drainage is a huge part of this project. Okay, you can see, see in this photo here, um, and we've had a lot of rain recently, all this water is sitting along the curb and then further deteriorating this asphalt. You can see the deterioration in these areas here. This is all the way up and down a mile and a half of Greenwood Drive. So there's three miles of curb on the road, and all along those three miles of curbing, these conditions exist. So this is a this is a really important part of this project is to correct this moving forward. So it's essentially like a bathtub on Greenwood Drive. The water has nowhere to go. So the reinforcement of the roadway. Um, our engineers have been looking at a technology called glass grid. And I think I mentioned this the last time. This will be laid down underneath the asphalt. Uh, again, it's used in highway construction, many airport type projects, but this will help reinforce the road and give the road extended life. Um, the protracted life, once we uh, incorporate this material, will be about a 20 year uh, life of the road. Uh, so again, really important part of this project is to incorporate this technology. So I, I mentioned traffic flow and safety. This is uh, adjacent to the trolley lots. And you can, you can see in this photo here that the right-hand lane turning into the trolley lots will be extended. And also there will be a, not a lot of new roadway striping uh, on, on Greenwood. So some of this hatching or striping here that does not exist now will appear in the roadway in many, many areas. And again, this is to really create a uh, much more safer travel for vehicles, uh, which we currently don't have in many areas. Okay, other aspects of the project that we need to get, that we're working on is down adjacent to the cemetery and the CSA building, there's this wooden guardrail that needs to be replaced as part of this project. I think it's uh, um, in the order of uh, well over 300 feet or more. And then this pedestrian fence or guardrail along the leisure trail is also something that we're looking to do. Uh, there's some grading issues uh, along this leisure trail that need to be corrected uh, as part of the project. So again, emphasis on the fact that we're not just repaving the road. Okay, so the project schedule, uh, what we're looking at currently, and you know, speaking with our contractors and our engineers, we're looking to mobilize sometime in September. You know, we're currently finalizing our engineering drawings, and we also have to submit to the town element for final approval. Once we do that, we'll be soliciting our bids. Um, I'm expecting that this process moves pretty quickly. And again, our goal would be to start sometime in September. We don't have a fixed date just yet. We do not want to start the week of Labor Day, obviously, for a lot of whole, whole bunch of reasons. Um, we expect the project in total to last about 15 weeks, roughly. And that's weather permitting. If we have weather like we just had, where we have two weeks or three weeks of rain, that could really kind of put this project, you know, put the project 
on a whole different time schedule. So those are all things that we're going to have to work with. Hopefully we don't have a hurricane um, as we did last year with plantation drivers. We were not paid when we mobilized and all the equipment was here. We had to send the contractor out to sea pines. We lost about two weeks on that project. Um, so again, hoping for the best, keep our fingers crossed that we don't have any significant storms. And then looking to complete this project uh, sometime in December. Again, this is all very fluid as to when we would complete this project. So one one of the questions that comes up is why are we doing this? Why are we doing this now? Why are we doing it in the fall? Um, asphalt plants do close down in the winter months, January and February. Um, also, if we were to start this project, let's say in late February or March, we're right up against the Heritage Tournament. And this project would create absolute chaos uh, for the heritage. There's no way we could pull this project off with that kind of a timeline, especially if we have delays. Um, and the question might come, well, why didn't you do it in the summer? Um, we all know the answer to that question. I, be I believe if anyone's come through Greenwind Great lately. So. Uh, as our as a vis visitation in Gale past, it feels continuing to climb. So, here's, I don't think I'm going to receive any Christmas presents if I get right through, through these next couple slides, so um, I'm going to try my best to um, get through this and um, hopefully uh, hopefully uh, you'll understand some of the complexities of the project. So, the vehicular traffic plan is complicated and we've met with our contractors and worked closely with our engineers on this. One of the challenges, as I mentioned already, is the three miles of road, or excuse me, the three miles of road, every mile and a half road needs to be removed. Needs to be removed. We, need we need to complete that in a very efficient and effective manner. So one of the things that we looked at as far as timing with this project is to try and condense and speed up that work by closing this, closing this roadway for approximately three weeks or so, we could shave at least bare minimum a month and a half of the total project. So instead of it going in 15 weeks, you would be looking at another six weeks on top of that to complete this work. So again, we're trying to take everything into consideration on the timing and execution. Um, but what we feel close at this time, by closing the road down for a period of time, allowing our contractor to get in there with multiple crews uh, to remove this curbing, because it's not an easy process. Um, and it's certainly something that, you know, you have big pieces of concrete being loaded in the truck, so safety is a big concern that we have. We need to look at having vehicles next to those trucks and all these, this moving equipment. Again, it's in the, in, the, in the best way to keep those other vehicles out of the area. So again, this area, this area from, from, from a flood course, course would be open into the flood course community. In this area, we would remain closed for three weeks. We were to provide access for Carolina Place, as well as you know, Lake Forest, which line, you know, the access through uh, Governor's Road. One of the things that we would have to do is close down the Forest Preserve parking lot that's associated um, with Forest Preserve on Greenwood Drive. And then this area that um, is beyond the Forest uh, Greenwood Drive, beyond the Forest Preserve, would remain open. So you can see here that we would have to reroute vehicles through club course on the governor's road. So I know this is not popular, um, but we are going to work with our commercial vendors on the larger trucks, triaxle trucks, and so forth. We will push those vehicles, larger trucks, to the ocean gate and try and mitigate some of these larger vehicles coming to the Greenwood gate. Um, and that's something that we still are working through. Um, Amanda is in the process of reaching out to vendors, uh, waste management companies, and so forth. With that being said, school buses and things of that nature would be allowed to come into the club course community through the Greenwood Gate. Emergency services, um, again, the, the trash trucks is something that we would have to work through, uh, allowing that, those vehicles to come in here and service the homes. Uh, so we're trying to take all that into consideration. One of our big operations on Greenwood Drive is the pit. Um, what we plan to do is establish a temporary drop-off for landscapers here at Lot 8 
and we 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 probably more likely put three or four large dumpsters there for landscapers to put the debris in, and then we will haul it to the pit for this period of time. Um, so throughout this area, we, we plan on posting uh, message boards, signage, and so forth to reroute this traffic um, and dip, you know, both through Governor's Road and out to the Ocean East. So I would suggest if you're a resident on the side of the community, try and avoid this area. Um, there's going to be, as Mark said, in, um, in this letter, there's going to be delays. Uh, there's going to be frustration. Um, no doubt about it, we are going to have traffic control, traffic delineation, uh, flagmen, everything that you see on a construction site. Uh, so we are making all those provisions. With that being said, again, it's a very fluid plan. Um, and we will you know, make every effort to keep the traffic moving with it. Like I promise, there's going to be delays. Um, see if I'm missing anything here. Um, but again, with the Ocean Gate, uh, there will be egress in and out of the Ocean Gate. Uh, so again, on the commercial traffic, large trucks, we are looking to push those vehicles from Greenwood Gate to the Ocean Gate. Okay. And we, we could go back to this later with some questions. Okay, so phase two of the project. Um, once we remove all the curbing and the construction site um, goes to goes to the next phase. And I have to mention there's a substantial amount of work to do on the shoulders shoulders of the, the roads, a lot of grading of soils and so forth, which is very very time consuming. Um, so with with that being said, we plan on single lane single lane closures um, from Club Clubbers to um, Governor's Road. And this again is fluid. Uh, I think it really comes down to monitoring the project. If there's an opportunity to open it sooner, we will. Um, but we do plan on, again, single lane closures, meaning more than likely that we would have this closed to inbound traffic, routing the inbound traffic still through Governor's Road, um, as well as you can still get go through Governor's Road to leave Sea Pines. Uh, this is on these single lane closures. We do plan on flipping those closures to either side of the road so we could finish some of this construction work. Um, in this area beyond Governor's Road, we are going to have to have some single lane closures. Exactly how that's happening just yet, I don't have the details. More, I'm hoping that we might be able to do some of it overnight. Not sure, uh, as those not, not as cost at night is is very high. So. Again, what we're looking to accomplish here is to reroute and detour traffic on Plantation Drive back. You know, if you're coming on Plantation Drive, more than likely we might have to detour you back to Fraser Circle and back out the Ocean Gate. Um, so again, in, in this scenario, access would be provided for Lake Forest and Carolina Place. The same would apply for the commercial vehicles, uh, rerouting those larger commercial vehicles to the uh, Ocean Gate. Uh, and mind you, during this whole time, uh, Governor's Road is would be uh, on, on both ends. So if you had to get to the grocery store um, and you live in Club Course, you would be able to, to come back out here to the to uh, the Greenwood Gate. There would be traffic delineation that's set up uh, to try and establish as much as we can a free flow of traffic um, back out and exit lines. <laughs> Okay, so the leisure trails. Uh, we did have an opportunity to meet with members of the safety and security committee um, within the last uh, week to discuss this. Uh, and this is uh, a little complicated. So on the leisure trail, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar, but the leisure trail parallels trolley lots one and two. Trolley lots one and two are going to be used for staging of equipment. Uh, nonetheless, we are going to make a provision uh, to allow bikes to continue down the existing leisure trail at the Forest Reserve here. You would make a left, come into the Forest Reserve, and head down the race dike trail and back across to uh, Greenwood Drive and continue on. Now this the leisure trail that crosses over to by lot three, we would be closing that again due to safety. There's a lot of work that'll be going on in this area. 
but we do not want to have bikes crossing this roadway. So from here, the leisure trail essentially goes back into club course, and this, this area would be closed. Um, so one of the provisions that we are making is up here at the gate on next to Ivy Road and in Evergreen Lane, there is a leisure trail that goes all the way down leisure, uh, Evergreen Lane and then comes back in here um, and crosses what we call the Acorn Auto Bridge, the leisure trail bridge, which puts you onto Auto Road if you're on a bike. So with that being said, you would be on the opposite side of any construction and you know, the, certainly the confluence of vehicles that are using out Governor's Road. I'm not sure that everyone knows that this bike trail exists. I don't think it's on, our, I don't think it's on the bike map. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, again, this would be, uh, if you live back here in the club course community, uh, this would be the way that you would go on your bike if you're coming back out to the store, uh, things of that nature. And, and this would be fluid as well as the, when can we open this back up? Um, not, you know, those are all things, kind of game day decisions as we go along as to how long we need to keep this closed for. Uh, could be for the duration of the project that we get over any sooner and, and restore it bike channel. Uh, coming over here to lot three, we will. Uh, but as it stands right now, this would be close for the duration of work. Due to, due to the fact there's multiple areas here that we have to cross and put in a drainage pipe to uh, there's some lagoons back over here. So in order to improve drainage on Greenwood, I think it's about half a dozen locations in which we have to come across. Uh, this leisure trail, um, and therefore, we want we want to make sure we keep the area uh, open to bikes, but also uh, be mindful uh, of uh, as we're coming through there. So, so that wraps up the last slide. I think I went through it a little quickly, but uh, Amanda, do you want to take a break now, and then you want to go through this? Right. So Amanda's just going to come back up for a moment. Thank you, Russell. So that was a lot to digest, I'm sure, a lot of information. So you're going to ask, I'm, and, and I want to be able to tell you, how do you stay updated regarding this project? A really important thing. We will be posting these updates to our website, cpinesofit.com, backslash Greenwood Drive Project. There's a placeholder there now because we're, we're building these developmental um, slides. So placeholder right now, but that's you, it is a live link. You can go to it currently, but that's where we will be uploading and continuing to produce uh, updates regarding this project. Our Facebook page is also a really great place to go as well. It's facebook.com backslash living. Anything that we post on our website also gets posted to our Facebook page. So that's another great place to stay um, up to date. Russell mentioned this, but we will have digital message boards. That's not just inside the community. Our goal is also to put them outside of the community. We have a lot of people we need to talk to outside of the community as well. So you'll see those in different locations throughout Sea Pine Circle, Palmetto Bay Road. Um, our goal is Business 278 and even on Hope Avenue. So we can tell people about this really critical project and the fact that there will be traffic delays. Uh, Russell mentioned this as well, but printed signage is really important. So you saw him cover the... Uh, not only the traffic plan, but also the leisure trail plan. So our plan is to make sure we have enough signage in both of those locations. Um, the state kind of real estate signs that you see during the heritage that say bike trail this way or a detour that way will be utilized in those as well. We're in the process of really determining how many of those we need, what locations we need them in, and what would be the best place to make sure folks are getting those messages. So, so by show of hands, how many people in this room receive the weekly updates that C Pine CSA sends out? Phenomenal. If you do not, for some reason, receive those updates, please, please, please email us. Info at csacpines.com is that email address. Please shoot us your full uh, person last name, the property that you live at in C Pines or that you own in C Pines, and then whatever corresponding email address you'd like to associate your account with. That is how we will get you added to our email distribution list. That's a critical way for us to push these messages out. We are going to be very cognizant of making sure we send them out on a regular basis. That may mean one or two a day. I will be very meaningful with how many we're sending, but if there's a delay, I know you're going to want to know about it. So that's one of the, the best ways to stay updated in addition to our website and our Facebook page. 
So Russell um, mentioned this briefly, but additional community meetings are being scheduled. Um, we're looking to meet with um, POA groups, we're looking to meet with different uh, property owners within the community, the schools, make sure they're up to date on what's going on. So we'll be starting school during this time as well. Any of the other groups that are interested in meeting with us, please reach out to us and let us know if you um, haven't heard from us. We are working on getting those scheduled now. And it's a big project, but Russell um, made me mention to this. The, the road was last fully reconstructed in 1996. In 1996, this happened from our records, from what we can see from the data that we have. So that was a while ago. Uh, uh, certainly, certainly uh, there, there was, was an overlay done in 2005 from what we can see. So if that overlay is, you know, not going to cut it. We can't do an overlay this time. We at CSA have done patching and paving to repair potholes and to try to keep it to its condition. But, but this project is desperately needed. And it's not just what you see. On top of the ground, Russell ran through some pictures of, you know, washouts and, and curbing issues and water holding on the roadway, but it's also what's under the roadway as well. Our stormwater drainage issues um, are, are throughout the community, but on Greenwood Drive as well, and it's very and vitally important to get this project taken care of. So again, we're going to do our best to get the, the communication to you as quickly as we can, as constantly as we can. These are the best resources to get to those locations, our website, our Facebook page, and then our mass email communication system. We will also excuse me, utilize the, the digital message boards that you see at Greenwood Gate and also the Ocean Gate, so we'll be utilizing those as well. And again, uh, big project, but we're, we're looking forward to taking it done um, so we can provide state roadway, better drainage, a, a better experience overall coming into Sea Pines into the, the Greenwood Gate entrance. So we will take a short break here on our meeting agenda, five minute break. Um, please use the restroom, um, grab a glass of water. If you need to folks on the webinar, please hang tight. We will come back in five minutes and then we'll handle our question and answer session. So we'll see you back in just a minute. Thanks guys. I'm just like a person watching right here. This is the screen. We may have been over driving. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, what is this? That's As the computer speaker, and it started be giving us this four feedback. Yeah. Um, so we switched it over to this, the box. That's really the only two. Okay, did you see? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out. How, it sounds like I've got a feedback loop. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's flanging. I know. I don't know where it's running. I think it's, it has, it's associated with this. I don't know where it's like with the speaker. Yeah, in other words, if, if this right here. That's my that, that's me. That's my my microphone. Yeah, because it's cut right. There's, Thank you. I don't get that.
So there should be a box that opens up now for this joining via webinar that um, allows you to ask questions. If you are asking a question, especially on the webinar, we do, we do ask that you specifically ask a question. Sometimes if it's a long statement, it's difficult for me to pull the question out of there on the webinar. Um, so you can just see that I'm on the board for the question and answer session. So we do have microphones. Marie has one here. David has one here. Um, they will bring the microphone to you. Please speak directly into the microphone so it can be picked up on the audio so those on the webinar can hear it as well as those in the meeting room. So David, I will have you start um, and we'll just pop right actually Marie, if we can grab them over here. That's great. Thank you. Is this working? Okay. I have a, I have question, a question for Russell. For Russell. Uh, uh, have you coordinated and spoken to the members and the leadership of Station 2 about the upcoming and uh, uh, moving every day different situation? And more importantly, have you talked to the shipyard station, which is second due to our plantation, and they have the ladder truck? So that's a little more difficult. Sure, absolutely. We, uh, we did have uh, meetings with the fire, uh, fire department some time back and uh, had a long discussion over coordination efforts over uh, regarding emergency response. With those specific Not with the specific, with the overall. And we, we can do that as well. We, we've had those uh, discussions with the person that's in charge of all the coordination. So, yes. Uh, next question. We'll just do. Just okay, she's got the other one. She has the other one. She has the other one. I have a couple of questions. Uh, you said this is, gonna, this is going to improve. You just identify This is going to improve traffic flow and safety. I live on Governor's Road, and I know when Greenwood Drive is closed down because it's a constant stream. You do have to do something to break that flow up so people can get out of their driveways and into the flow or across the street. What are you going to do? That's the first one. So in regards to that, as I mentioned earlier, part of this project, we will have a traffic control plan, which means the contractor and our security department would be supplying personnel uh, to aid in that, aid in that effort to uh, if you're trying to get back onto Governor's Road into traffic, if there's no apparent egress, we would have to assist in that operation. Then the other thing you said is the road is going to be two foot wider. Why is that? And the two foot wider on each side is essentially where the yeah is essentially where the curbing is exists now. Um, that area will be asphalt, and again, that's 
to provide a wider lane for vehicle traffic. So right now the lanes are fairly tight. And again, that's just providing a wider travel lane for vehicles, providing a more comfortable drive into and out of Seabound. And will there be any change to the landscaping? In other words, there's no vision for a line of palm trees down this, is there? Palm, well, palm trees? No, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. Well, yeah. um, there are some fear, to be honest, there, there are some fear goals as part of this project. Um, there are some landscaping enhancements that need to be made, especially at the uh, intersection of the plantation and, um, and Greenwood. There's some line of sight issues over there that need to be addressed. So, yes, all, all the way in that. Yes, Are there any plans to uh, limit the amount of daily passes or push those people to the other gate? Given if if you're going to be flowing all these people through governors anyway, why not push them where you're pushing the commercial traffic? What? We have uh, our captain, Greg Coleman, here to provide you an answer, answer that question. There are no current plans to uh, divert traffic other than what uh, Russell has just said, specifically to commercial, but we're not done yet again. So we're going to look at what our options are, how we can best facilitate. We don't want to just move an issue to the to other. The other. So, trying to. You're already moving issues to governors. Oh, so, yes. Absolutely. The same way you're moving it with the with the five, with the new gate entry. So, you have to do something for the people at governors. Because all I ever hear is words, and we'll look into it, but nothing ever happens. Okay. Well, so I, can't, I don't understand why you can't commit to pushing people the other way for three weeks. Well, we, we are. We, we believe that people will automatically avoid this area and go to the other gate. So we're going to monitor both gates and determine anything that we need to do to adjust as we go. So we'll commit to adjusting, absolutely. Yes, as you, before you ask the question, just identify who, who you are. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen here. So two questions that are closely related. One is, will the entrance into the Sea Pines gate, main gate, um, will that configuration remain the same? Or will that be changing? So I'm assuming we'll still come in, we'll have the pass lane, and then we'll have the daily purchase pass lane. There will be no change to that? Not at this time. Okay. And secondly, I, I understand um, that there's some issue that people would like to see the ocean gate get more traffic, but that is already a very congested area much of the time. So has there been any consideration to see if you could at least temporarily reconfigure the entrance and exit to that gate so that perhaps you could open up the exit lane so people could enter and then have a secondary Lane exiting. I mean, I'm just looking at. There's no room to the to the to the entrance lane currently, but there is a parking lot um, just outside of that exit. I'm wondering if something could be done at least on a temporary basis. We, we can certainly look at that, that parking area that you're referring to. It, it is to turn vehicles around that don't have a pass right. and send it back. So, but for three good. weeks, is there something that could be done so you could still have an owner? Um, you know, entrance, so we're not stuck behind 20 uh, day pass holders or big construction tools trying to come in. That's a very tight road. You think that Greenwood is a tight road. That's a very tight road coming on and out of that gate. Yeah, I think it's to your point. I think that's something we ought to explore further. That's where options are available. I mean, it's tight back there, so uh, obviously we don't want to cause any, any, any other issues with safety. Uh, just we can certainly look at that. You know, it's it's a pretty tight area, as, as Russ said. Um, there, whether we could convert a lane, the exit lane, as an entrance lane. You know, it's there's a lot of things that are happening at that intersection as well. So, you know, but it's something we can certainly take a look at, especially during this period, this three week period, where we're we're closing down uh, that entire uh, roadway. Yes, uh, Dana. Thank you, Dana Apricot. 
Um, we've just, for the last two weeks, experienced a Pope Avenue reconstruction, and I wonder if you have, A, contacted the city and found out when they're finishing, and I know they still have some leisure pass to do, and so if you are constructing, will coincide with theirs. Also, there's a fairly large opening of the University of South Carolina Beaufort campus on September 18th, which will bring a lot of traffic down Greenwood Drive. Have you contacted them and seen if we could arrange for them to go in the Pope Avenue entrance? Regarding Pope Avenue, what's that? The Pope Avenue entrance is their primary entrance, but they have access through Office Park as well. I think that everybody's going to avoid Greenwood Drive on this when we're constructing Greenwood Drive. So however you can get there. Pope Avenue is supposed to complete construction now in mid-September. So it would be at the beginning of our project. It's supposed to be, yeah, so it's supposed to be done in June. <coughs> But the, the last information that I had from Tom Lennox was that they anticipated that it would be completed by mid-September. Hi, I'm Paige Berrigan. As, As I, I said, said last time, I keep looking at that picture, which you can see the bottom of, which is, you know, I think old sea pines and, and how it was intended to look at the roads. And I asked the question, I hear a lot about the, the um, curves. I'd love to know why were those ever put in in the first place? When was it and why were they put in? Was it functional or was it aesthetic? So I'll follow up when I hear that answer. My understanding is that it was aesthetic. So it was an, an afterthought. Uh, I think that was part of the reason why it's created the issues, the drainage issues that we have now is that it was not engineered. It was an afterthought. I don't know if the curbing then was engineered. It was just the salt that was done on the edge of the existing pavement and it was formed and poured. I've been here 20 years and it's been here at least that long. I don't know if anybody else can add to that, um, but it's been at least 20 years. I mean, I'm just saying, so, um, when we go to the back of the room here, just pick on. I'm Carl Becker. I've lived on Hearthwood for 26 years. I have a question as to why, with this major undertaking, you haven't considered, as I assume you haven't, putting a circle in at Hearthwood Plantation and Greenwood. That intersection really has four different roads coming in. There's Greenwood, there's Plantation, there's Hartwood, and there's the farm, people going in and out of the farm. The traffic on Plantation, I haven't been here for the last month, but prior to that, the traffic on Plantation was backed up for as much as five minutes, waiting to try and get on to Greenwood. With a circle, I don't think that would happen. Coming in from the gate to the inside of the plantation, there's a sign uh, around the area of the cemetery that directs people to continue on Greenwood to get to Harbor Town. Yet all the GPSs that I'm aware of direct the traffic down plantation. It's quite often that people stop at that intersection. Well, the wife yells one way and the husband yells the other, the other way. way. I don't mean they to be known for some issues, but a circle, circle would let them go around and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that overall the traffic would flow better if there were a circle. One of the objections to that is there are a lot of oak trees there. It is my understanding that some people who have looked at this have figured out a way to preserve all the oaks while putting a circle in. I think now is the time to consider that, although it's probably too late. But 
while you're doing all of this massive repair and reconstruction, adding the circle, I think, would help with your objective of improving traffic flow and safety. Thank you. You want me to answer the first part? Well, the, yeah, the circle at this point has not been contemplated or engineered. Um, one thing I, I mentioned earlier, um, there is a line of sight issue as you come to the that stop sign on Plantation Drive. You cannot see up the roadway. Um, there's a line of trees that block that view, and we intend on removing those trees to improve, improve that line of sight as it's blocking uh, the view up the road. So we feel that that's one of the things that we are doing to improve the safety and visibility at intersection. Right now, cars are sitting there, not able to make the left because they can't even see who's coming. So that, that, that's our first step. So a question from the webinar. This question is from Property Understanding Lawyer. Program, this program will likely decrease state trippers. How will this be applied with the new gate fee policy that says 3% or more decreases in dailies will cause the eight fee to revert to $6, especially since we are already down about 4% versus this time last year? Do you want to take that question? The uh, calculation period for the base uh, uh, calculation for gate fees began on August 1st. So what this is going to probably do is my, my guess, is best guess, is that it's going to reduce traffic in the base here uh, so that it will be easier to attain an increase. So the, the increase goes to, I believe, January 1st through the end of next year. So there's a short period of time that there's an over or not an overlap of those two calculations. So the base period again starts August 1st, which this project obviously uh, starts after August 1st and we hopefully complete before January 1st. So it would reduce traffic. My anticipation is it would re reduce traffic, but we'll see. Right here. Yeah, you've been raising your hand for a while. <laughs> I am Jane Stouffer. I live on Governor's Road in Woodcock. Um, I have a couple so questions. questions. One about the coming in through the gate, because now coming into the gate, lots of times there's a backup almost to the circle. And if we're still selling passes there and we're going from two lanes into one to get into Governor's, it's going to be such a, a larger bottleneck. Is there any chance that gate passes could be sold at the Welcome Center and not at the gate during this period? And my other question is about any construction, um, plus garbage removal, uh, recycling, landscaping for those of us who are going to be living on the highway that will be Green, <laughs> will be Governor's Road during this period. How that's going to be handled? I want to answer that first question. Um, the uh, as far as issuing passes at the um, uh, Welcome Center, I think that's a possibility to do at least some mitigation possibly through there. I'm not sure that we could get permission from our landlord to drive all traffic around their building back there. And that may come, create a much larger problem than we would anticipate. So, yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's a viable uh, question to ask. So we'll ask. Uh, are you saying you're willing to follow up and ask? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, and to address the second part of your question, can I go forward? To address the second part of your question, we are reaching out to landscapers, trash companies, recycling companies to try to figure out the best ways to not only take care of the area of club courts and governors and all the roads that will be affected by the detour, but also to ensure that when they're in other locations in the community, because there will be other locations that have additional traffic on those roadways as well, such as <coughs> North and South Sea Pines Drive. To, to really try to make sure we're, we're mitigating that um, those delays as best as possible. So we're reaching out to them as well. Well, the, well construction on, on We know that at this time, but we will be communicating that if you have a project planned, that you get appropriate approval through Sea Security, just so we can 
I mean, there, there's some, going to be some limitations on Governor's Road, okay? So if you have a project planned and someone's delivering windows, okay, and they're coming in at noon to deliver windows on a semi-truck, we're probably not going to permit that, okay? So they may have to come at a different time of day at night to deliver and schedule that. I, I can't tell you all of the circumstances. I can imagine circumstances where construction would be limited on uh, Governor's Road just because of the parking requirements of some of these trucks coming in to try to service. I see landscapers parking on Governor's Road. Uh, that's probably not going to be permitted either. In the back, gentlemen. Uh, I guess it's Butch because I live on uh, Wood Duck Road. Um, the, uh, just as a point of information, you know the town is getting ready to uh, do a lot of construction on Pope Avenue right after Labor Day. They're going to, with, in conjunction with the new park, they'll be putting they'll in new signaling, signaling they'll be building a new intersection down here at that, where that parking lot is. So that's probably going to have an effect on how many people you're going to drive into the Ocean Gate. I just thought I might let you know. Thank you. You know, we, we see the, the town plan. We think most of what's going to happen down there initially, at least from what they've communicated to us so far, is very similar to USCB, where they go in and do the site improvements well before, well before they do the roadway road improvements. So, so there are some, some comments on how they're going to be able to do all of that and when they will be able to do all that. But, but the, the road work starts the week after. Uh, Labor Day. I understand what you're what you're saying. Yes, right. I've seen that schedule as well. Yeah. So, but we're working with the town on this as well. You know, they may do some impacts, but most of the major impacts are probably going to come a little bit later in the project. So, you know, as we've said, there's not another time for us to do it either. So, I understand what you're saying. So, we're they're very aware of what we're doing as well. Okay. I mean, I just talked with Scott last week. And, and I know the road work starts like the Tuesday Understand. after. Yes. So, okay. Understood. We, we just have uh, Jared Mays would like to make a comment in order to Jared. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. I know you guys were having a question about uh, landscapers not parking on the side of the road. Um, we do have a relationship with some of the side companies. Um, I noticed they're kind of the biggest issues because they don't have a choice but to park on the road to get their. It's called a big bed and tumbler to get the pallets off. Um, so we're going to be in contact with them as well to have them coordinate through us when a good time would be for them to come if they have to do that. So, um, like the pavers and the, the sod, is what we notice is the biggest issue. So we will be in contact with them. So let everybody know. In the back there. Thank you, Dan Crow, and then my neck under slain. Uh, my property and uh, maybe that of five of my neighbors is scarcely 12 feet uh, from my property line to Governor's, uh, or I mean to Greenwood. And I'm wondering if you're going to widen the road and you're going to have a three foot uh, shoulder, are you going to displace the drainage swale enough that you're going to encroach into the bamboo screen at the back of all these properties? I'll, let you have as well. yeah, I'll be glad to address that. The, uh... The two foot widening basically replaces the curb that's there right now. Uh, so the width of the road really isn't changing. Um, the location of the drainage well is not going to be pushed any closer to the property. Okay, so and even the removal of the curbing is not going to, with the equipment brought in to do that, won't, that won't jeopardize, jeopardize the uh, bamboo screening either? Um, no, so the bamboo screening is a little bit further back on the road. Um, the equipment will be limited mostly to uh, right there on the shoulder on the edge of the ditch where it is now. And a follow-up question on the diagram where you had the leisure trail closing. Um, there's obviously a difference between the trail and then the bike path being on uh, on the road itself. Are you going to prevent bike traffic on Governor's Road for those residents in club course? Meaning the trail part we get but what about if you're a resident in that area and you're in the red arrows, red arrow section on that diagram? Back up. I'm just trying to one diagram. Sorry. That one. So interior to club course here, and you're in this salmon.
Governor's Lane or on the Governor's Road? Am I prohibited from being on a bike on Governor's Road? Yeah. Well, you know, we, we came up with this leisure trail plan, as I mentioned earlier. We met with the safety and members of the safety and security committee. Obviously, if you're riding a bike on Wood Duck Road, um, you're not in this uh, heavy traffic. Um, but as far as the communication, we want to make sure you know, we're letting the community know not to go back in here if you're just out for a bike ride. If you're living, living back in, I would say, you know, you come down Wood Duck Road. If you're on, on Governor's Road with this heavy traffic, not recommended. Although we are looking into some signs that would state, share the road, those sorts of things. But, yeah, okay. I wouldn't I would, I would I would take running right around Governor's now. Yes, in the back. Felice LaMarca, I have two questions. Uh, the first one concerning the Ocean Gate. Um, have you considered not selling passes during this time and finding another location to sell passes? Uh, that's going to be a nightmare. We already stand behind and there isn't this congestion, this diversion of uh, traffic. So that's number one. Do you want to answer that question? Uh, we, have, we have not looked at discontinuing sales at the Ocean Gate specifically. We have looked at staffing with additional staff to facilitate traffic flow at both gates, quite frankly. So that's that's another matter, and it's just a matter of getting the uh, uh, staffing levels up to that. You know, the, 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 the concept that was mentioned already here about talking to the uh, uh, folks at the resort and the Baldwin Center to be able to provide that is an option for us. Uh, we can look at some other options as well, but you know, we, we anticipate that this is going to be uh, a, a really bad time to visit sea time, sea ponds. Well, I would ask it's going to be pretty, pretty difficult to get in and out, and we will look at what we can do to mitigate it, absolutely. But you know, we don't want to cause other problems in other areas by doing the wrong thing. Well, I would urge you to uh, consider strongly not selling passes during this time at the Ocean Gate. Please. <laughs> Number two, um, <clears throat> Russell, you mentioned that you're going to remove trees to increase the visibility at the plantation intersection. Um, I would ask you before you do that, to tell us how many accidents we've had at that intersection, how many injuries, and what is the reason that this is now happening? I don't have the traffic data off the top of my head, but again, it's our, our engineers have looked at the area, and there's clearly a line of sight issue. If you're making that left turn, the their hollies they, they obscure your visibility. I'm not disagreeing with that. Mm -hmm. I'm asking the question. If you're doing a traffic study, how many accidents have we had? I don't have that information in front of me. To justify the removal of trees. Well, just to let you know, in that area, we do plan on some great landscaping once those are removed, something low. Um, but again, I don't have the traffic information in front of me. Yes, sir. Sergio Reynal. Wait for the microphone. I am Sergio Reynal. Uh, question, will there be signage of any kind on Greenwood at the circle so that, to use your example, the big truck with the windows doesn't pull up to the gate and then he's got no way to turn yeah. around? I mean, how are you going to direct yes. people's consent? So to answer that question, we, we do plan on placing signage on Business 278 on the opposite side of Seapine Circle as well as Paul Bay Road, Hope Avenue, and so forth. Um, we, we have spoken with the town uh, regarding that coordination, uh, so that would be part of our plan is to avoid these larger trucks, tractor trailers, ending up in front of the Ocean Gate, and then we have to turn them around. So, right next. David hey, Harris, timeline question. I think I heard you say earlier, the town of Hilton Head has not yet approved this, and you've not put bids out for the job. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Is it realistic, realistic to get all that done and begin construction in September? 
Uh, it is. The uh, plan should be submitted to the town of uh, within a week's time frame. Uh, their review time is is uh, actually very good um, for uh, municipality to review plans. So um, it is very realistic that uh, plans will be put out for bid prior to the final approval once we have the initial comments. Um, if we know there are going to be any major changes that would affect the bid, um, and then they'll be put out for bid following that submittal. Is it possible to exclude the company doing the Pope Avenue work from making a bid on this project? <laughs> in, facetious, but seriously, is there any penalty we can put into this for making sure the project is done within 15 weeks, provided there's no major weather? You may address that. Regard, regarding the option for penalty for untimely completion, uh, the answer would be yes to that question. There would be potential penalties for not completing on time. That's a consideration that we may make as well. A bonus for early completion. So, so now I'll have to talk over with the finance. See you, So, again, it's just a follow up to we have two, are we still going to have two? lanes coming in at Greenwood Gate, how are, are they going to tell them alternate or something so that they, because they've got to make a right turn onto club course. Yeah, I think the, uh, the gate officers will probably slow traffic if we build up on the right lane or left lane and try to merge that traffic in so we can get it you know, as good as possible going through that. It's a bottom line, you know, it's two lanes to one whether you're going um, down Greenwood are over, but we're driving everything into club court. So you're, you're, it's a fast change, and we anticipate having lots of traffic control in that area to make sure that it's as smooth as it can go. Well, did they just say alternate? Well, I think it does depend on volume of traffic in each lane, but yes, I think that's a good option. Russell, I have a question from the webinar. So the question is, what is the imp estimated impact on the homeowner annual dues as a result of this planned project? I'll let Brett answer that question. There's no change to the annual dues for our residential property. Okay. I'm Rosemary Staples, and this is out on the left field question, but it's a good well one. What if during the three weeks that Greenwood Drive is closed, that there was still a charge to go to see times. I mean, it's not like people are going to be running down here to come in, but that could certainly save a lot of hassle at the gate, at either gate, selling tickets. I mean, selling assets. That, that currently has not been considered, but you know, I, we've got what anticipation about 30 days between now and the beginning of construction. So we're going to be going through a lot more scenarios. And we, as, as Russell mentioned, we, we don't have the contractor yet with the bid and what they're going to do uh, on all of this. We're going to put these requirements in, but we're looking for ideas from them as well to help mitigate all of this traffic. I mean, these are the guys that do this all the time. So we'll be working with them to try to do that. We've talked about night work as well, uh, especially on that corridor from uh, Governor's Road to Plantation. Uh, so that's a, a big consideration for us. We just have to see what, how much that's going to, whether, first of all, they're going to be able to get this done within that time frame. Uh, we believe from our engineering advice and from the contractors who we have already been in contact with, who we know are going to put bids in on the project, that they can get this done within the time frames that we've set. But there's still some moving parts here. And we need to uh, uh, complete those. And as Amanda said, we'll be communicating those out as we go forward. Christopher. Thank you. Uh, Christopher Cliff. Um, earlier this year, there was some controversy over CSA's operating budget for 2018, which showed a deficit. Uh, the explanation given that board meetings uh, and several board meetings was that it inc the deficit included the Greenwood reconstruction. It was explained that the Greenwood construction would not go ahead 
unless the board was confident the funds were available. There hasn't been a board meeting since the end of May, I believe. And the board meetings I've attended, the question has been up in the air. What is the budget for this project? And where are the funds going to come from? Now, the next board meeting is until September. Um, so I'm a little surprised that you're so confident being able to start in September. Yet, as far as I'm aware, the board has not actually given its approval. The uh, board did give approval for the project and the budget uh, uh, cycle. Uh, there were comments that we wanted to, before Brett, I believe, goes forward on this, we need to make sure we have funding available. And most of that was contingent upon getting the gate fee increase, which is now done, which is why we feel confident in moving forward. But obviously, we're going to be in communication with the board, but the budget has been approved. Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom Hennessy, uh, perhaps you can just describe for me how uh, will people, including myself, be able to get in and out of, say, Carolina Place or the CSA offices when uh, the road is closed for that period of time? So access uh, for Carolina Place, there will be traffic delineation from the intersection of Governor's Road to Carolina Place, and that may um, change on the roadway itself, one, you know, one side to the other. Regarding the, the CSA office, uh, being that we're beyond Governor's Road, um, beyond that, for at least the first three weeks, uh, there'll be ample access to the CSA office. After that, once we get to the, uh, again, this single lane closure, which may happen during the day, may happen at night, uh, we have to work out, but there will be access to the CSA administration office uh, throughout the project. Um, just to just to make sure that folks are aware, we did mention it, but Six Oaks Cemetery is located right across from the CSA administration building. So the same applies for Six Oaks Cemetery. They they have sort of funeral services. Um, some of us have loved ones over there. We have um, you know may want to go check on your burial plan if you uh, have one in that location. So the same thing for CSA admin building, six of um, continuous Carolina place access. So I know for Carolina place uh, residents, renters in that area, that's why the, the little red line is sort of a dotted line because we have to maintain access to that location. So it may be a, a, a single lane either on the right hand lane or the left hand lane of the roadway, but we will always maintain access for that location. The same, the same would apply for uh, Lake Forest, which is directly across from Governor's Road. The access would be maintained. So, yes, sir, all the way in back. Uh, yes, Ed Warner, of course. Uh, just to address the comment about the curbing, if you go back, and I've been in construction all my life, I'm just turned 70. So, if you go back in the 60s and the 70s, there was a thought process among states, especially further north, you go to add curbing whether it was an asphalt type curbing or concrete curbing, uh, the sidewalks, look at the sidewalks in the last few years, we put ramps in. So it was the thought was to keep the water on the road, not let it go off into the side. Now that engineering thought process has changed. And so now that's where you see in many, many states, they're eliminating curbing on the interstates, the state highways, and it's a natural for, for us here in Sea Pines to do the same thing. Yes, it gives us two foot safety zone uh, and it helps with our water on the highway, which we don't want, uh, it gives us hydroplaning. So uh, what was then is not today uh, as far as design process and we're just bringing, their design is bringing us current, okay? So my other question would be, let's go back to the gate. Right now, if you're a homeowner, you've got your decal, you come in on the left side. If you're buying a pass, you come in on the right side. For the construction zone or time period, let's flip-flop it and give us, especially those of us that live, uh, governors, you know, all of Cook Course, uh, come right in on the right side and we're there are natural to make a right-hand turn. And we're not sitting in line waiting to try to jump over. There are days some of these uh, people buying their passes think they own the highway right now, and trying to make that right turn on the club course is uh, 
like the Indy 500 or one of the NASCAR races. Thank you. We, we, I love this is still working, but we appreciate that feedback. Um, I'll both count on the curving and uh, potentially switching those lanes to the point I think we need to explore that option uh, to keep the property owners moving for the gates. Yep, yes, ma'am. I noticed earlier when you were talking about when the engineering uh, surveying was done was in 2015. That predates Hurricane Matthew and Irma. And I'm just wondering if, if there's any fear that there was greater damage after that, that engineering project was done. And if there's a contingency plan, if once this starts, it's more complicated than it initially seems. So to answer that question, we have taken additional warnings of the road in the last year after Hurricane Matthew. Um, and in terms of the underneath underlayment of the road, nothing has changed. Um, but we have, to your point, we have looked at that. The hydrology study is what was done before Hurricane Matthew. So, so um, Andy and his team have walked the entire road, walked all the ditches, surveyed this entire area to take into consideration any other changes that we need to make. And they are making a whole bunch of changes with drainage. Right now, the drainage on Greenwood Drive is very inefficient. Um, therefore, we're putting all pipes across the road uh, in, in, numerous, in numerous areas to improve the drainage of Greenwood Drive. In the back. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Rick Bolger. I live on Evergreen Lane. Evergreen is off of Ivy uh, along with Acorn. I uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, sure the exact number of homes on Acorn and um, Evergreen, but I believe it's somewhere 50, 60 homes. So on behalf of uh, the homeowners in my little neighborhood, uh, I'd like to address uh, an issue which has been addressed by virtually everyone here. And that's this diversion of traffic of both lanes coming through the gate, making a right-hand turn uh, on the club course. Well, for those that don't know, Ivy Lane is that right-hand turn immediately after you get on the club course. Now, it will be virtually impossible. It will be an impossibility for any of us to get out of our neighborhood. It's the only means of ingress or egress we have. It's difficult right now. And whenever the road is closed for an accident or any other reason, it's impossible. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of, of my neighbors, I, I respectfully and hopefully politely demand that there be some traffic control, whether it be a flagman, a police officer, because we will absolutely need help getting out of our neighborhood if this plan is put into effect thank you we appreciate that feedback sir um and that's something that we uh, have talked about as far as our traffic plan uh putting additional flag persons and having you know security having a presence there but to uh, to your point allowing uh those vehicles to exit uh ivy road will be an important part of the uh overall uh traffic plan in that area Just, if you have a question, just please state it. So. That's it. I've seen in other traffic projects like a temporary stop sign, a uh, little red and green or something. Can you not put them at these like the Ivy, the country club, uh, the residence club? Uh, just have something that stops traffic without having to pay for a person to be there? Yes, ma'am. As part of a traffic control plan, that could absolutely be something that could be implemented. Um, it might have a great effect on the backup at the gate as well, um, but it absolutely is something that, uh, that could be included in the traffic control plan. Uh, and also, keep in mind that this traffic control plan is done by us as the engineer. Uh, as we solicit bids, the contractor will also be required to provide his traffic control plan based on our guidance. Um, so 
while this is our guidance to the contractor, the final traffic control plan uh, will have to be presented and approved uh, based on all these recommendations, uh, based on CSA staff as well as our uh, suggestions. I also have a question from Governor. Okay. Go ahead. Go from Green Coast. Question from Webinar. Between Governor's and Plantation, when this part of the road is being repaired, how will traffic be handled? Let me uh, see if I go back to the slide, um, this slide here, which is phase two. Um, what we described here were single lane traffic closures. And again, it's it, um, to what we're talking about. This work may happen at night. It may happen during the day. We are really going to see how uh, the contractors respond um, to our, our uh, bid. Um, in, in this area, we intend on maintaining at least one lane of traffic um, open at all times to this area, and flag men will have to be present uh, directing uh, um, vehicles in this uh, area of Greenwood Drive. So, yeah. Any other, uh, uh, Felicia, you have one more question? Yeah, yeah, just here's the microphone. Hi, police again. Um, I'm not, I don't mean to criticize, so please don't take this the wrong way. But we have to, yeah, yeah. Being, a month, being a month away from this beginning, I think we have too many questions that have been asked that we don't have the answers to. And I really hate for us to get started, and it's a learn as we go along. So that's concerning me a lot as I sit here and, and hear the answers. And we've considered this or we haven't considered that. And we were planning and we have to talk to the contractors and we don't know whether it's this or that. I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm sorry. We appreciate your uh, feedback. We have been speaking to our contractors for the last year on this project. Um, I think the point being once we finalize that contract, I think what Andy's point is, things are still fluid and may change. But we have been in discussion with proven contractors that have done large-scale projects within sea pines and outside of sea pines that have a very long track record of success and high-quality work. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going down this road and entering into a project in this fashion. I just wish you already had the contract in place. Um, it's, it's fair, I'm fair enough, but again, again I, know, I know who these contractors are. We have the utmost confidence in their quality of work, their, how they expedite their projects. Um, they have a proven track record of success on large scale projects, with, which is this. this is, Russell, with all due respect, ma'am, th what they're doing is typical. I just finished up a contract up the Northeast. We didn't know until two days before, and we mobilized and we were able to do it. Now, I have a suspicion one of their contractors, I work for one as large as that. It, it is, is the big contract in the world today. That's the way things go. And it's better, we have a time frame. I think everyone is forgetting. We have a time frame where there's kind of a low in our inbound traffic, our visitors, it's the time to get it done. You don't want to do it heritage, spring break. You don't want to do it during the summer. So Russell and the team, uh, they're, they're kind of up against the wall. And, and I congratulate them for what I have just heard today. Uh, I think it's a very good job. And I wish my contractor I was working with was down here because we've been going after it. And everything I see, I could do with a few changes in his time frame. And for traffic, I'll tell you, the big contractors will have more flagmen people out there. I don't think, since I have to go down golf course, I don't think it's going to be a real problem once I get through the gate. Thank you. Well, we appreciate your uh, feedback and comments. Uh, thank you for everyone uh, that came out today. Indeed. We'll be having more updates as we move on. Yes, sir, you have another question before we leave? Uh, Hello, Bill Tunney, I've 
been a homeowner for two months and three days. <laughs> Congratulations. In, in contrast, and, then, uh, and it's great to be last. I feel last. Um, I've been involved in hundreds of public hearings up north. I want to compliment you. Uh, no great involved here, but you did a lot of things right. I've been following you online and now in person, and um, there's a lot of detail here. You answered the majority of questions. They weren't left hanging. A few were. I greatly appreciate the uh, contractor's comments back here. I think that will apply. So, nice job. Thank you very much. Can I read your